debt interest. Now, debt interest is actually very interesting because it's something that the Treasury does not put in to its formal budget projections. You have to kind of extract it by calculating all these differences of various other things they do put into the projections, and that's what we've done here. So what we've got here is just a straightforward graph showing the amount of money in normal <coughs> terms, i.e. Like not inflation adjusted, um, are, that we're going to be spending on debt interest over the next few years, out to the end of the forecast period. And as you can see, it shoots up a lot, alarmingly. This bottom line here, which is the one you should focus on first, is the Treasury's forecast. And as Ruth mentioned, that goes up from around $31.5 billion this year, up to around $72 billion by 2014. So more than doubles. And you can see how it lifts off in a very alarming way. And so by the end of the period, you're not only spending much more money than we are, for example, on public order and safety, you're also spending, getting on for what we're spending on education. Now, the question really that a lot of people are asking is, can we possibly fund this deficit? Can we possibly fund this debt at anything like the current level of interest rates at guild yields? And of course, the answer is, we don't know. The Treasury has basically assumed the conventional forecasting assumption that guilt yields stay more or less where they are now, i.e. around 4 to 4.5%. Four so what we've done is we've looked at what the impact would be if they actually increased from these levels. And we've looked at three possible alternatives. Uh, the Treasury's assumption, the Treasury's assumption plus 1%, plus 2%, plus 3%. So plus 3% would say that guilt yields move up from current levels to around 7 to 7.5%. That may sound quite high, but remember, it's been much, much higher than that in the past. Back in the 70s, they reached as high as 17%. So, you know, it's not that extreme. Greece at the moment is on around 6.5%, just to be all information. And it's, it's quite conceivable that we could see that sort of increase. But even if we don't, you can see that even the Treasury's forecasts, which are based on some pretty optimistic assumptions, as Ruth has said, including the assumption on GDP growth, which I think most people see as being completely outside the range of possibilities. So, you know, even on the Treasury's forecast, we still got debt interest going through the roof. And I think this is something that is just not appreciated by a lot of people. We hear a lot of talk, a lot of commentators, and uh, obviously members of the government, telling us that, you know, our debt is easily fundable. Well, in one sense, it is in as much as we haven't had a guilt strike or anything like that so far. But the costs, in terms of debt interest, are rising all the time. <laughs> By the end of the period, even on the Treasury's for own forecast, which, as you can see, we think are probably a bit optimistic, um, the cost per household <laughs> just to pay debt interest is £3,000 a year. So that's £3,000 <clears> tax <throat> on each household just to pay the interest bill. And this is going to be an increasing problem. And it's one of the issues that was ducked in the budget altogether. Now, moving on to the second uh, issue that Matt mentioned, um, public sector pay. Now, public sector pay roughly accounts for around 30% of public spending at the moment, including the cost of those pensions. It's two, 200 billion plus per annum. Something is going to have to give. And if you look around at what the other deficit countries around Europe are doing, all of them are either freezing or, in some cases, cutting public sector pay pretty well across the board. They're also increasing contribution rates to public sector pensions. They're doing something significant. Now, all the government in this country has so far um, announced is a partial pay freeze on around three quarters of a million public employees. But when you remember that there are around 6 million direct public employees, that's not a very high proportion. It's not going to save very much money. We put forward, um, and Matt's going to be talking about our book later, but we put forward uh, a rather more um, uh, ambitious plan for two years of public sector pay freeze and some other changes to things like contribution rates to public sector pensions which saved, by the end of two years, 14 billion per annum. And that is much closer to the kind of thing that the next government is going to have to be thinking about. Now, a lot of people say, yes, but you can't really freeze public sector pay. You can't really do this to public sector workers because you're going to be hitting nurses, you're going to be hitting teachers. We all know what the headlines are. So what we've done is we've had a look at the latest uh, numbers from the Office for National Statistics. They do an annual survey on average earnings across the economy. And
and we've looked at different groups of public sector workers relative to median earnings in the economy as a whole and the earnings of the top 10%. So these, these people up here are quite well paid relative to the economy as a whole. And as we can see, compared to the median, all of these major groups, in terms of their median earnings within those groups, are doing better than the median earnings across the economy as a whole. Even teachers, nurses, firemen, police officers, well, police officers do very well. So even relative, you know, they're all doing well to the, relative to the median. Some groups, some of the top paid groups, senior bureaucrats and so on, are doing very well against the top 10% in the economy. So it's not true to say, as I think some people are sort of implying, that public sector workers on the whole are not well rewarded. And remember one other thing. These figures exclude pensions, and public sector pensions are really, as we all know, in a league of their own at the moment. So on, on average, it varies, but on average you can say that the final salary index and pension that a typical public sector worker enjoys is worth around 25% on top of those figures. And in the private sector, in general, most people no longer have those things. So this is an area that has to be looked at. It's one of the areas that was ducked in the budget yesterday.